Hello and welcome to today's episode. In this episode, we will discuss about the concept of working capital, its need and importance, factors affecting working capital requirement, working capital financing policy and estimating working capital requirements. I am Dr. Arshia Hussain, PhD in Human Resource Management and teaching in the Center for Management Studies, Jamia Millia Islamia University, New Delhi. So we will start this episode with the meaning of working capital. <music> Funds invested in current assets like raw materials, work in progress, finished goods, debtors, bills receivables, cash and bank balances held for meeting routine expenditure of a business is known as working capital. Technically speaking, working capital is the difference between current assets and current liabilities. In simple words, working capital refers to that part of the capital of a firm which is required for financing short term or current assets. There is a difference between fixed capital and working capital. Fixed capital can be acquired through long term financing whereas working capital is financed through short term financing. There are two major concepts of working capital A gross working capital B net working capital. A gross working capital it refers to the firm's investment in total current assets. Current assets are those assets which can be converted into cash within an accounting year. The gross working capital is a financial concept. It enables the enterprise to provide correct amount of working capital at the right time. Gross working capital is also called as circulating capital because it is revolving in nature since it is converted into cash again and again. It is invested, recovered and reinvested. According to Jestenberg, circulating capital means current assets of a company that are changed in the ordinary course of business from one form to another as for example from cash to inventories, inventories to receivables, receivable into cash. B. Networking capital. Networking capital is the excess of current assets over current liabilities. It may also be defined as the difference between current assets and current liabilities. Current assets include raw materials, work in progress, finished goods, debtors, bills receivables, prepaid expenses, cash and bank balances. Current liabilities are those claims of outsiders which is to be paid within a period of one year. It includes bills payable, sundry creditors, accrued or outstanding expenses, bank overdraft and so on. The concept of net working capital is a qualitative concept. It indicates the ability of the business to meet its operating expenses and short term liabilities. It also measures the extent to which the firm is protected from liquidity problems. The liquidity of a firm is measured by its ability to meet its short term obligations as and when fall due. Networking capital is significant for investors and lenders because it shows the current financial position of the business enterprise. Working capital may be classified in two ways. A. On the basis of components of current assets. B. On the basis of time. A. On the basis of components of current assets. According to this, working capital may be classified as capital invested in the various components of current assets such as cash, inventories, receivable and so on. This classification is directly related to the concept of gross working capital. 
B on the basis of time. On the basis of time, working capital may be classified as number one, permanent or fixed working capital. Permanent working capital is the minimum level of working capital which is required on a continuous basis by a firm in order to maintain its activities. It includes the minimum level of cash, receivables and inventory maintained to carry on business operations at any time. Thus, the minimum level of current assets which must be maintained by any firm all the time is known as permanent working capital. The second one is temporary or fluctuating working capital. Temporary working capital is the amount of current assets that fluctuates or varies with seasonal requirements. It is any amount over and above the permanent level of working capital. It is that portion of working capital which represents the current assets needed to meet fluctuating demand due to change in production and sales. Working capital is essential for the survival and growth of a business. Adequate working capital is essential because of the following reasons. Number one, to avoid technical insolvency. Since with adequate working capital, the firm can pay for material, direct labor, selling and administrative expenses and other cost of doing business. Second one, to maintain reputation and credit worthiness by making prompt payment to suppliers of materials and others. Third one, to raise loans from banks and others on easy and favorable terms. Fourth one, to declare regular dividends without retaining divisible profits in the business. This satisfies the investors and thus helps in raising additional funds from the market. Fifth one, adequate working capital helps in creating an environment that raises the morale of its employees, increase their efficiency and creates goodwill in the society. The working capital needs of a firm are determined by the following factors. First one, nature of business. It is the primary factor that determines the amount of working capital required in the business. In case of a trading firm, the amount of working capital required is generally small. On the other hand, the manufacturing concerns requires a substantial amount of working capital. Second one, scale of operations. The amount of working capital depends directly upon the scale of operations of a business. Generally, greater the size of a concern, larger will be the total requirements of a working capital and vice versa. Third one, technique of production. The techniques of production also determines the amount of working capital. A firm that employs labor intensive technique of production in general needs more working capital as compared to a firm employing capital intensive technique of production. Fourth one, production policy. The requirements of working capital are also affected by production policy. In those industries where demand is subject to wide fluctuations due to seasonal variations, if the policy is to have a steady production throughout the year, including off-season period, the requirements of working capital would be higher because of accumulation of inventories during the slack period. Fifth one, production cycle. It is an important factor which determines the amount of working capital required in the business. Production cycle refers to the time period involved in manufacturing the goods. The longer the production cycle, the larger will be the funds needed and larger the amount of working capital needed and vice versa. Sixth one, business cycles. The amount of working capital is also determined by the nature of the business cycle. Business fluctuations lead to cyclical and seasonal changes, resulting in a shift in the working capital requirements. For instance, during the boom period, the need for working capital requirements is expected to grow to cover the lag between increased sales 
and receipt of cash as well as to finance purchase of additional material to provide for the expansion of level of activity. Seventh one, credit policy. The level of working capital is also determined by credit policy relating to sales and purchase. A firm that buys on credit and sells on cash need a smaller amount of working capital than an enterprise that sells on credit but has to purchase on cash basis. Eighth one, dividend policy. The dividend policy plays a significant role in determining the level of working capital in an organization. The payment of dividend consumes cash resources and thereby affects working capital to that extent. Therefore, while estimating the requirements of working capital, the extent to which profits will be retained or paid out to shareholders needs to be decided. Ninth one, market conditions. The degree of competition prevailing in the market has an important bearing on the working capital needs. When high competition prevails in the market, a larger inventory of finished goods is required to meet customers' need. Otherwise, the customer may go to some other supplier. If competition is weak, a firm can manage with a smaller inventory of finished goods because customers can be served with some delay. Tenth one, miscellaneous factors. There are various other factors such as extent of coordination in production and distribution policies of the company, means of transport and communication, the import policy of the government, management's attitude towards risk, banking facilities and so on also influence the requirements of working capital. The working capital requirements of a firm can be financed by any of these approaches. The first approach is hedging approach. This approach is also known as matching approach. According to this approach, the maturity of the sources of financing should match the maturity of the assets being financed. This means that fixed and permanent current assets should be supported by long-term sources of finance. Second approach is conservative approach. According to this approach, the requirement of total funds should be met from long-term sources. The use of short-term funds should be restricted to only emergency situations or when there is an unexpected outflow of funds. Thus, under conservative approach, the working capital is primarily financed by long-term sources. The larger the portion of long-term sources used for financing the working capital, the more conservative is said to be the working capital policy of the firm. The third approach is aggressive approach. According to this approach, the firm decides to finance a part of the permanent working capital by short-term sources. So, the short-term financing under aggressive approach is more than the short-term financing under hedging approach. The objective of this policy seeks to minimize excess liquidity while meeting the short-term requirements. It is important to mention here that neither the hedging approach nor the conservative approach can be used by any firm in the strict sense. Therefore, the financial manager should try to have a trade-off between the hedging approach and the conservative approach. The duration of time required to complete the sequence of events right from purchase of raw materials for cash to the realization of sales in cash is called operating cycle or working capital cycle. In case of manufacturing concerns, working capital is required to provide for the following. First one, procurement of raw materials and services. Second one, conversion of raw materials into work in progress. Third one, conversion of work in progress into finished goods. Fourth one, sale of finished goods. Fifth one, conversion of receivable into cash. The duration of the operating cycle for the purpose of estimating 
working capital is equal to the sum of the durations allowed by suppliers. Thus, for calculating total operating cycle period that is TOCP and net operating cycle that is NOC, firstly the following conversion periods needs to be calculated. First one raw material conversion period that is RMCP is equal to average raw materials stock divided by total raw materials consumption multiplied by 365. Second one work in progress conversion period that is WPCP which is equal to average work in progress divided by total cost of production multiplied by 365. Third one finish goods conversion period that is FGCP which is equal to average finish goods divided by total cost of goods sold multiplied by 365. Fourth one receivable conversion period that is RCP which is equal to average receivable divided by total credit sales multiplied by 365. Fifth one deferral period that is DP is equal to average creditors divided by total credit purchase multiplied by 365. Note RMCP is equal to raw material conversion period, WPCP is equal to work in progress conversion period, FGCP is equal to finished goods conversion period, RCP is equal to receivable conversion period, DP is equal to deferral period, NOP is equal to net operating cycle. On the basis of conversion periods, the TOCP and NOC may be ascertained as follows. Now let us see an illustration on calculation of total operating cycle period and net operating cycle. Compute the operating cycle in days from the following information of XYZ limited. Period covered 365 days, average period of credit allowed by suppliers 16 days, average debtors outstanding 4,80,000, raw materials consumption 44 lakhs, total production cost 1 crores, total cost of goods sold 1 crore 5 lakhs, sales for the year 1 crore 60 lakhs, value of average stock maintained raw materials 3,20,000, work in progress 3,50,000, finished goods 2,60,000. Now let us see the solution to this. Operating cycle of XYZ limited. First one raw material which is equal to average raw material divided by raw material consumed multiplied by 365 which is equal to 320 upon 4,400 multiplied by 365 which is equal to 27 days. Second one work in progress, average work in progress divided by total cost of production multiplied by 365 which is equal to 350 divided by 10,000 multiplied by 365 which is equal to 13 days. The third one is FGCP which is equal to average finished goods divided by total cost of goods sold multiplied by 365 which is equal to 260 divided by 10,500 multiplied by 365 which is equal to 9 days. The fourth one is debtors conversion period which is equal to average debtors divided by total credit sales multiplied by 365 which is equal to 480 divided by 16,000 multiplied by 365 which is equal to 11 days. Thus the total credit allowed by customers which is equal to 16 days. Thus total operating cycle period is equal to raw materials conversion period plus work in progress conversion period plus finished goods conversion period plus debtors conversion period which is equal to 27 plus 13 plus 9 plus 11 which is equal to 60 days. Net operating cycle which is equal to total operating cycle period minus deferral payment which is equal to 60 minus 16 which is equal to 44 days. Therefore, the firm has a net operating cycle of 44 days.
the two components of working capital are current assets and current liabilities. In order to calculate the working capital requirements, the different components of current assets and current liabilities are estimated. However, there are different approaches to estimate the working capital requirement of a firm. They are a working capital as a percentage of net sales. This approach is based on the fact that the working capital for any firm is directly related to the sales of that firm. So the working capital requirement is expressed as a percentage of expected sales for a particular period. The working capital estimation is dependent on the sales forecast. This approach is based on the assumption that higher the sales level, the greater would be the need for working capital. There are three steps involved in the estimation of working capital. The first step is to estimate total current assets as a percentage of estimated net sales. The second step is to estimate current liabilities as a percentage of net sales and the third step is the difference between the two that is the net working capital as a percentage of net sales. Second is working capital as percentage of total assets or fixed assets. This approach of working capital estimation is based on the fact that the total assets of the firm consist of fixed assets and current assets. On the basis of past experience, a relationship between number one, total current assets that is gross working capital or net working capital that is current assets or current liabilities and second total fixed assets is established. In this approach, the working capital may also be estimated as a percentage of fixed assets. Third one, working capital based on operating cycle. In this approach, the working capital estimate depends upon the operating cycle of the firm. A detailed analysis is made for each component of working capital and estimation is made for each of these components. The different components of working capital are current assets, it includes cash and bank balance, inventory of raw materials, inventory of work in progress, inventory of finished goods and receivables. Current liabilities, it includes creditors for purchases and creditors for expenses. Different components of current assets require funds depending upon the respective operating cycle and the cost involved. The current liabilities on the other hand provide financing depending upon the respective operating cycle. The estimation of working capital requirements can be estimated as a need for cash and bank balance. Every firm must maintain some minimum cash and bank balance to meet day-to-day -day requirement for petty expenses, general expenses and even for cash purchases. The minimum cash requirement for these transactions can be estimated on the basis of past experience. B. Need for raw materials. The formula for calculating investment in raw materials is as follows, which is equal to estimated production into estimated cost of raw material per unit into average raw material holding period divided by 12 months or 365 days. B. Need for work in progress, which is equal to estimated production multiplied by estimated work in progress into average holding period of work in progress that is in months or days divided by 12 months or 365 days. C. Need for finished goods. This can be calculated as estimated production which is in units multiplied by cost of production per unit excluding depreciation multiplied by average holding period of finished goods which is in months or days divided by 12 months or 365 days. D. Need for receivables. It can be calculated as estimated credit sales in units into cost of sales per unit excluding depreciation into average debtors collection period which is in months or days divided by 12 months or 365 days. 
Next, sundry creditors. This can be calculated as estimated yearly production in units multiplied by raw materials requirements per unit multiplied by credit period granted by supplies period, which is in months or days, divided by 12 months or 365 days. Next, creditors for expenses and wages. This can be calculated as estimated yearly production in units multiplied by cost per unit multiplied by average time lag in payment of expenses which is in months or days divided by 12 months or 365 days. Thus, estimation of working capital requirement can be calculated as first current assets. Under current assets, we include cash balance, inventories, raw materials, work in progress, finished goods receivables, debtors, bills, which is equal to gross working capital. Second one is current liabilities. Creditors for purchases, creditors for wages, creditors for overheads. This is equal to total current liabilities, that is CL. Excess of current assets over current liabilities, that is CA minus CL. Net working capital. Now, let's see Another example, calculate the amount of working capital requirement for ABCL limited from the following information. Rupees in per unit, raw material 160, direct labor 60, overheads 120, total cost 340, profit 60, selling price 400. Raw materials are held in stock on an average for one month. Materials are in process on an average for half a month. Finished goods are in stock on an average for one month. Credit allowed by suppliers is one month and credit allowed to debtors is two months. Time lag in payment of wages is one and a half weeks. Time lag in payment of overhead expenses is one month. One fourth of the sales are made on cash basis. Cash in hand and at the bank is expected to be rupees 50,000 and the expected level of production amounts to 1,4,000 units for a year of 52 weeks. You may assume that production is carried on evenly throughout the year and a time period of 4 weeks is equivalent to a month. Now let's see the solution to this. A statement of working capital requirement. So that is all for today. Hope you have understood today's topic. We will see you with another topic in the next episode. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you.